morning. Hi everyone. I'm talking to both Instagram here and Facebook here. Good morning. It's Dr. Shefali and I'm here. I try to be here on a daily basis to talk about some wisdom teachings that have helped me in my life. I've called it a viral wisdom course that I'm giving out to people. And today is day 13. So today what I'd like to focus on is our inner wound. I'm a clinical psychologist, so I help people discover what their inner wounds are and how they can heal them. So why is it so important to understand our inner wounding? The reason for that is because it is from our wounding, our inner wounding, that we continue to wound others. And this is the primary thesis of my work in conscious parenting. And this is what I teach people to heal. When we begin to see our lives as a predication, as a foundation from our wounding, our wounding is the base. And we then create a foundation of our life based on this wounding. Then we begin to see this pattern replicate itself over and over again. And then when we have children or other intimate relationships, these patterns begin to abound. And we think, because we are asleep, we think it is the other. We think it's the children. We think it's the boss. We think it's the friend. And right now, we may think it's the virus. But what we don't understand is that the way we react to the other comes not from the other, but it comes from our wounding. And this is across the board. Every single person I've ever met creates patterns in their lives based on this initial wounding. And the tragedy is that they think that they are in a pattern because of the other and not because of themselves. So this leads to a great feeling of helplessness, victimization, some blame, resentment toward the other person versus realizing, oh my goodness, I'm in another pattern. I'm in yet another pattern where I'm wounding myself again. I'm again creating the same pattern where I am re-wounding myself. So let me just uh, stop for a moment and say hello to everyone. I see Tenille is from South Africa. I see people from all over the world. Hi, everyone. So I am welcoming you all. I'm seeing you all. I love that you're here and you on Facebook and Instagram. So I'm going to switch between my screens. And sometimes I don't take enough time to chat with you all because I'm just all about giving the message and moving on. So I do want to acknowledge that I do see you. I'm happy you're here. Okay, so now... What do we do if we've been in this pattern for 50 years? What do we do? How do we break out of it? Well, the way to break out of it is only in one time zone, in the present. You cannot look at your patterns and go, oh my goodness, I've wasted the last 17 years in a pattern and now it's too late. No. The reason why we all suffer is because all of us, bar none, create dysfunctional patterns and evolution to awaken means to disrupt these patterns. So if you feel, oh my goodness, this pattern has been in play for the past 17 years. So now what's the point? I've wasted my whole life. That is not the approach. The approach is not to go, oh, I, I'm, I've wasted my life. The approach is to say, yes, I've been living in a pattern. This is natural. This is normal. This is what Dr. Shivali said. Everybody does. So yeah, your pattern may be 17 years. Somebody else's pattern may be 52 years. Does that mean you don't break the pattern just because you've held on to the pattern? No. The way to awaken is through the breaking of patterns. That, that breaking of patterns is spiritual and emotional evolution. And the only place to start any change is in the time zone of the present. 
So the first thing to understand or to awaken to is the awareness that whatever you're experiencing in your life right now is coming into your awareness, into your reaction, into your toolkit, into your present because it is a pattern. You and I do not respond to anything new. We always respond to everything based on the pattern. So this is something that is very hard for humans to stomach because this means they have to take 100% accountability for their reaction. And we don't want to take 100% uh, responsibility for our reactions. We want to blame the child. We want to blame the cookie. We want to blame the alcohol. We want to blame the president. We don't want to take ownership of our reaction, right? No, we want to blame. Our instinct is to look outward, to blame. We were raised to look outward. So if you want to evolve, right? Richie says it's very hard to change the pattern even after you know what the pattern is, 100%. But that is still staying in victim mode. Even what you just said, Richie, that even after knowing the pattern is difficult to change, part of it is a helplessness that is part of your pattern. Everything out of your mouth is a pattern. Everything you think is a pattern. It is not spontaneous. We are not original. We are not spontaneous. We are not responding in the present moment. Most of us are responding automatic, automaton, robotic, enslaved to the past, patterned. We are like play, play, rewind, play, rewind, play, rewind, play. We are not playing in the present moment. Now this awareness is a, an epiphany. It is a shock. It is a shock because you want to be in the pretense that it is the other. You want to point the finger and go, no, 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 no. I got angry today because of him. I overate today because of him. I'm bored in class because of the teacher. I'm not interested at work because of the, of the boss, right? Or the paycheck. We want to live our whole life blaming the other for our pattern. Because to take responsibility that it's us, whatever's coming out of our mouth is not because of the other, but because of our pattern means we have to take accountability. And that is so grown up. Like who wants to be so grown up? All of us want to be little children getting away with blue tantrums, like just like mass tantrums with blue murder, but is a way of saying we just want to get away with it. We just want to pass the buck, pass the buck. It's your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. Certainly it's the teenager's fault. Certainly it's the toddler's fault because, because if I lost my temper, it's not because I'm a raging, uh, you know, rageaholic. It's because of my, my toddler, right? We don't want to take full responsibility because that is too grown up, right? So even here in this virus, we're looking for somebody to blame. We're looking for some division. We're looking for some good guy, some bad guy, right? In one of my talks, I was looking for a good mother, a good father in my politicians. I didn't find them. Then I realized, oh, why are you looking? You're not a child anymore. And I was like, yes, I am. No, I'm not. I'm an adult. Holy cow. That means I have to be the adult adult. I have to parent myself. I have to do my own research. I have to find my own way. I can't just keep blaming the other one. I have to find my own key and then open my own cage and I have to liberate myself. Like that's, that's a bummer. I thought I could be, you know, live in, in a childhood inf infantilized cage forever and just blame, 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 blame. Right? Who wants to really, really grow up? Nobody. Because to grow up means to take full accountability for your happiness, but also for your rage, for your sadness, for your overeating, for your procrastination, for your laziness, for your lack of purpose, lack of passion, lack of everything. You have to take accountability. You're like, damn it. Is it nobody else? Is it nobody else to blame? Nobody else's fault? Mm-mm. 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 Now that is accountability. That means adulting, growing up. 
And when you begin to become aware that it's time for you to grow up, there is no parent out there. There is no husband who's going to save you. No wife who's going to mother you. No child who's going to make you feel amazing. This is all an inside job. Then you decide to wake up. Then you decide, okay, you know, I have to live my life. I have to decide how I want to respond in this present moment. You have a choice how you respond. You have a choice how you react. You cannot blame the media, the governor, the surgeon general, the president, or the neighbor. You just can't. You can do it in your ego, but you can't do it in your essence. Because your essence, your wise essence knows that you are living a pattern. So even how we respond to the news right now, even how we respond to the virus right now, is not the unique virus. It's not the unique news. It is your pattern. So for example, I wake up every day ready to teach. I'm inspired. I'm like every last breath of mine till I die, I am going to teach, right? Because I am impassioned by it. I am uh, energized by it. I am infected with the disease to teach, right? So I, th I, that's my power. That's my accountability. I have to take charge of my happiness. Now, another person may get totally depressed, may get totally withdrawn, may get anxious, right? And they're like, you know, my governor is really stupid or my president in my country is really stupid, so I'm going to get depressed. What that person needs to understand is just like my wanting to be here didn't happen because of you, didn't happen because of you. It's happening because of something inside me. That's my pattern. That person who's depressed needs to understand it's because that's her pattern or his pattern. That is how they customarily respond to stress. Each one of us has a pattern, has a thousand patterns, but definitely has a standard pattern when we experience stress. And typical pattern is blame the other, yell at the other, tantrum at the other, at reality or the person. And then we do one or two things. We feel better about ourselves because we just put the other one down or we get really depressed, go into bed and drink or something like that. So our tendency when we get stressed is to feel attacked and then in order to defend ourselves, we attack the other. This is the tendency. Very few people, only enlightened people will say, what is my pattern? So in this virus, we're all being attacked. It is a fabulous opportunity for you to see your pattern. So like I said, my pattern is to wake up every day and be infected with the disease to teach. Yes? Now it sounds like I'm amazing. Wow, Shafali. Like, oh, so before you think I'm amazing, you know I'm going to give you the other side. Okay? Because I refuse to let you think I'm some holier than thou person. So here's the other side of my sickness. Okay? My sickness is that I'm truly diseased to teach. So at some point, I get exhausted. Yes, but I will not take a day off. I will martyr myself. This is where it becomes the disease. And I will be exhausted. And I will keep doing this till one day, watch. You'll be waiting for me and you'll be like, where's Shivali? Where's Shivali? Where's Shivali? Shivali will be exhausted. And then I won't be able to show up for five days. This is my pattern. I go to the end uh, 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 till I fall off the cliff, right? Till I'm exhausted. And that's not healthy. That's not healthy. To, and then in, so now I know this about myself. So I do take care of myself. Don't worry, I'm not going to be exhausted because I've already seen my pattern. I've seen my pattern of murdering myself, murdering, 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 and then I die. Or I kill everybody in the house, so to speak. Right? So now I know my pattern, so I'm taking care of myself. Don't worry. But there's a shadow, right? I want to show you that every pattern has some sickness to it. And my pattern used to have a lot of sickness to it. I used to feel like I am not worthy. The other is more worthy. And I should sacrifice myself to teach the other till I'm dying. You know, and this is how I lived my entire 20s. I used to be exhausted till I learned I am full of shit. That's my pattern. And I need to wake up and learn to give 
from a place of getting. So if my giving is not giving me, it's not giving, it's false giving. And when I woke up to my pattern that I am a martyr because I don't value myself, then I began to go, oh my goodness, I'm no better than the people I teach. I'm totally dysfunctional. I have to change my pattern. And I learned to begin to give and in the giving I was getting. So there was no more martyrdom. I killed the martyr in me. That's how I changed a pattern, okay? So you too, in this moment of crisis, will begin to see your pattern. So I saw my martyr go, ah, martyr Shivali, call to duty, here she is. And then I told the martyr Shivali, I thought I'd killed you. Where did you come back from? Martyr Shivali is like, well, it's, it's times to be martyred. This is crisis. So I had to take the martyr and put the martyr away and say, martyr, go back, right? And now the other Shifali can come, which is happy to be here, is getting, not just giving. So in this way, you are going to see your pattern. So what pattern are you seeing, right, in this virus? Many women will see the martyr. Many uh, women will see, oh my goodness, they've had no boundaries all their life. And now they're seeing that nobody knows how to function in their life without them. Nobody knows how to pick up the dish. Nobody knows how to pick up the socks. You know, now they're with their partners the whole time. And now they're like, oh my God, I've been playing mommy. I've been playing mommy to an adult. I have to fire the mommy. So you're going to observe lots of patterns of yours coming up during this virus. The most typical one is the pattern of fear. All patterns are predicated out of fear, by the way. So I created my pattern of martyr because I was afraid I wouldn't be lovable. I learned as a little girl, you receive love by abnegating yourself, by sacrificing yourself. When you sacrifice yourself, you're a good girl. So I learned good girls get love. How do you be good in my culture? Sacrifice yourself. So I became the penultimate martyr till I killed the martyr and I ended that rubbish and now became authentic. So I was afraid that I wouldn't get love. So you need to ask yourself, what is the role you have been playing in your life? What is the pattern you've been playing in your life? Because you are afraid. What are you afraid of? It is always the same thing. All of us create patterns out of fear. What is the fear? Basic fear. I'm not lovable. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy enough. You will not love me. You will not see me. You will not value me, right? Something like that. Something to do with your worth. So as children, we did not feel worthy because our lovely parents were messed up themselves and they told us that who we are is not good enough as we are. Nobody, and I can ask my child, my own daughter will tell me, yeah, including me, mom, thank you very much. None of us were raised or will raise our children to feel worthy as they are. <coughs> Why? Because we live in a sick culture. I'm blaming the culture. We live in a sick culture and so we have learned that our worth is not based on ourselves. Our worth is based on our doing, on our looking, on our showing, on our belonging, on our uh, acting, right? So all of us begin to show and do and act and achieve. We are told that our worth is based on our doing, on our achievement, on how we look to the outside world. So no child ever received the message that who it is you are is enough. Nobody did. So because of that lovely gift that we got from our parents, we go around the world as if it's a marketplace, foraging for, give me worth, do you like me? Am I lovable? Do you love me? Right? So for me, the role of martyr gave me a lot of worth because I gave myself to people and people took me. Why wouldn't people take me, right? We should never blame the narcissist. The narcissist is like, okay, you want to give me you? I'll take you, right? And then the empath feels all resentful. But if you sacrifice yourself, why should they take or not take you? So I did that because I wanted to feel loved. I wanted to feel lovable. And each one of us creates our own pattern out of a desire to be loved. Even the narcissist creates the narcissism because they're afraid they won't be loved. All of us are the cliche. We're all looking for love, right? But we're not looking for fake love. We're looking for authentic love. We're looking to be loved for who it is we are. And 
this is the pandemic divine health and wellness says yes this is the pandemic the pandemic is that we are all searching for love we're all searching for worth we're all empty looking for a sense of self so when a real pandemic attacks us on top of the pandemic that's within us now we panic right now we fall apart because now we're really triggered because even the outside illusion is snatched so now you're forced to look inside and go who am i truly who am i truly without the mask and the way to do that is to begin to look at your patterns right here right now you are living a pattern i always say we are not living lives we are living patterns anxiety is a pattern addiction is a pattern martyrdom is a pattern victimhood is a pattern anger is a pattern resentment is a pattern you know all these are patterns complaining is a pattern whining is a pattern uh, resistance is a pattern tantruming right uh, always being the good one is a pattern always being the bad one is a pattern watch your pattern you are living a pattern right if you're always arguing it's not the other it's you the pattern is you if you're always complaining it's you if you're always unhappy no matter whether you go to timbuktu or thailand hmm, maybe it's you right everyone in your life is an annoying person everyone in my life is an annoying person i don't know about you and i truly believe it sometimes some days i'm like no this is not a pattern this is them but then after three hours when i counted 15 people who i'm annoyed with i'm like come on shivali it's you it's you it's you what are you doing you're creating your reality right so even right now in this moment of the virus even though there is a virus yes because there are many people who are saying there isn't a virus i do believe there is something out there it doesn't matter though there is a problem on our healthcare system and our doctors and nurses are fighting and a lot of people are dying so whether we want to believe it's a, a conspiracy or not the facts speak for themselves yes there are enormous numbers of people in the u.s right now dying dead gone families devastated so this is a fact but how we deal with this fact is unique is idiosyncratic and that is your mirror that is the mirror the insight the doorway to your pattern how you react right now is how you react to every crisis if you're devouring the news if you're hungry for data if you're like waiting for something on the outside that's your pattern if you're helpless if you're withdrawn if you're panicking that's your pattern if you're angry all the time irritable eating a lot drinking a lot mm, pattern if you're annoyed at your partner complaining criticizing everything they do is wrong this is not because of the virus this is not because you're staying 24 7 together this is your dynamic this is the pattern right so whatever you're seeing right now is the pattern so how do you change it first you have to see it first you have to be aware that it is not coming from the virus it's something within you you are co-creating it you are part of this so your reaction right now is part of your makeup so the first thing is to be aware of it and then the second thing is to the main question I ask to break out of my pattern because all patterns are based on fear the main question I ask myself to break out of it is am I coming from fear right now or am I coming from abundance am I coming from fear or am I coming from abundance and the second question I ask myself to break out of the pattern is am I living in the past or am I living in the future and if either one is an answer wrong answer because I can only live in the present another thing I ask myself to break out of my patterns is am I playing a role or am I acting from my soul right am I playing from ego or from essence am I coming from control or from connection am I coming from false self or from true self so lots of questions I ask myself to figure out am I really in this present moment or am I a robot puppeteered manufactured by my pattern who am i right now and to ask that question you have to go inward and begin to question in that moment so that you can pivot in the right direction if you don't go inward and ask 
Who am I right now? Am I this or am I this? Am I old or am I new? Am I past or am I present? Am I inauthentic or am I authentic? Am I living in fear or am I living in abundance? When I began to break my patterns, I can tell you, I began to ask this one question. Am I doing this because I'm afraid right now? Or am I doing this because it's really me? All my answers, and I was in shock, all my answers till I really changed were based on fear. I'm doing this out of obligation. I'm doing this out of duty. I'm doing this because I don't want them to think badly of me. I'm doing this because I feel sorry for the other person. I'm doing this out of some sort of fear. And my answers were never, I'm doing this because it's re I'm here right now. So it is with the virus. Are you doing this because you are afraid of what will happen? Because if you're living right now, it hasn't happened right now. Or am I living right now? And if you begin to ask just that one question, am I afraid of something that will happen? Or am I afraid of something that is happening? And for most of us who don't yet have it, we're afraid of something that will happen. And we can understand this future-based worry because this is how we live with our children. We never live with our children in the present moment. We're always afraid of what will happen. They're not going to get into college. They're not going to have a successful career or they're going to end up in jail. Huh? How do we know that? And who knows whether jail will be bad? Maybe they write a symphonic Nobel Peace winning you know, piece in jail. We don't know. We can't decide what's good or bad. So most of our thinking is based on the future. Because if nothing has happened to us right now, then the right now is powerful. The right now is amazing. The right now is full of adventure, full of curiosity, full of power, full of resilience, courage. So are you living now? Are you living now? Now that's how you break the pattern. You understand? First you become aware. Then you go inward. Then you ask all these questions. You introspect. You discern. You use your wisdom. And then you go, is it happening now? No? Enter the present moment. Enter the present moment. And in the present moment, like I said the other day, you pause, you purge, purge all the extra belief systems, purge all the inauthentic ways of being, purge all the excess, and then you enter all. What's left is all. A-W-E. Every moment you're alive should be an awe-filled moment. It may not be the moment you like, it may not look like how you want it, but it is here. And because it's here, and because you're alive in it, it is all inspiring. And that's how you break from your pattern and begin living in the present moment. And your children know how to do this like geniuses. Follow their lead. This is how we begin to break our patterns. And this virus is an opportunity for you to see a pattern. It is not happening because it is suddenly happening. Whatever is happening in your mind and in your home is the pattern. And when you tune into this, then you have respect for it. You have reverence for it. You stop being angry. You surrender and go, what do I need to learn right now? And now you can take advantage of this moment to evolve, to grow. And now the virus becomes an opportunity for you to raise your consciousness, for you to evolve. Now the virus is your teacher and we say thank you, like we do to every moment in life. Thank you for joining me. If people want to learn how to meditate, I have a link. It will be on my Facebook page, but I'll give it to you right now. It's facebook.com, yes, forward slash groups. That's how you get to groups. And then forward slash, the name of this group is called Get Superpowered, forward slash. I meditate on this page every day at different times. So please join that page and join me and I will teach you to meditate. If not, I hope to see you tomorrow. Bye everyone. Have an awe-inspiring